Well, here we are. Martinsville. 500 lap race. And we've dominated. Um, this is the new setup. I ran uh, a little less adjusted version of this in the uh, last cup race I ran in the league. And I think I finished third. Um, adjusted during the race. And pretty much the top three cars were like the same speed, so it's basically how we came out on that last pit stop. No one could gain. Being just as fast is just as good, even if you don't win. Um, and this, the setup, the way I have it here is not as fast. Um, I think one of the reasons is, from my experience, E4 tends to be about two tenths slower than E5. I think that makes a, a significant difference. The other thing is, I think that race is at night, and this is during the day. And that could also be, you know, one of those, you know, differences. Because at night, you're supposed to run faster. Older air gives you better horsepower. Tires don't heat up as much. It's a track, cooler, etc. So, that could be it. But, I concentrated this race, since I'm not racing V5 or V, as uh, getting it to drive good. And uh, after about 65 laps, I was able to still run 19 threes. That's about a little over halfway through a fuel run, and I think that's really good. <laughs> um, I've adjusted since, and I'm like running fours. Something I noticed is I have very little tire pressure, and uh, it takes a few laps for it to come in. Now, why? Well, if you're running 125 laps in a stage, and uh, you get too loose, see yeah, it? A couple laps, and I'm on twos instead of fours. And you uh, get too loose and you adjust it. Well, it makes sense if you do a lot of tire pressure adjustments that uh, you get them so that they don't get as hot down uh, down the back end of the fuel. Uh, 75 laps. 85 lap, I think the 85 laps is the longest run I had. And I could still drive it, but I was slower because of it. When a, tr a flat track like this, when you got you know, heavy rear end gears, tight turns, um, you go down in here, right? And see how I'm holding in the line? I got first tire track. Um, you start to slide up when the right rear. When, it, when you set up on the right here. And then you know, that means you can't get on the gas fast enough because you're not pointed out of the turn correctly. And then if you hit the gas too hard, you end up sliding. The other thing I noticed about Martinsville, since I have fast setups, I noticed this in the fall, but, um, if you're out of lane, like here, I go up here, right? If I go up here and I hit the gas, it tends to get tighter, especially on older tires. So part of that is that the right rear is spinning when, it, when you know, if you're on the right rear and you're too loose. But even when I'm not, I notice that it, it tends to get tighter. When I'm down with my left side tires, right right on the curb there, Ooh, thank you. With no damage. Um, I think I have better grip, so it's all about the entry. You know, you know, get a setup 
he can run as close to the curve as possible. I like to get my left front and that white stuff. Seems to be a little more grip, like when it lands on a few other places. Some would call it the Harvick line because they discovered when Harvick was winning the plan a lot, one of the things he would do in turns one and two is he there was a spot that no one ran right next to the white line that was lighter than the rest of the track. And they realized, well, it's like fresh asphalt. Nobody put their tires down there, so it was, wasn't warm, so it had more grip. I feel that those same kind of things in some of the tracks, and Martin's will be in one of them. But just being low, you know, helps a lot. But knowing that, you, you're forced to go up high, like, you know, and... What did I say about this AI? It's not that they're bad. It's, they're slow, and the, the way... They're not slow in, in, in overall speed, so much, well, for like, you know, a really good setup like I have, yeah, they, they are unbearably slow. But it's in the way that they're slow that makes it difficult. Is, again, see acceleration? Yeah. On old tires, I used to keep them easily. But on fresh tires, like we all have fresh tires right now, they are just as fast to me down the straightaways. But in the turns, they're like, literally like 10 miles an hour slower than and they slow down quicker than you do. So it, it takes a while to judge how to run with them without running over them. And it just gets worse as the run goes on. See, like, if you look in there, it probably wasn't much below 70 miles an hour through the turn on the first tire. I'll get down to about 60. Especially as the tires wear, maybe even dip in the high 50s. These guys are like, you know, 52 miles an hour in the turn. And, not, and fairly quickly into a run. I did something to tighten it up so my handling is a little bit off um, at this point. I have it weird because it's, it's tight in a certain way, but it, so it's not really like wearing like tight. And I'm trying to, this, if it goes green, this will be the longest run. It'll be over 120 laps. Whoa! Yeah, that's Stuff like that does not help. And um, he just checked up. They do that in all the tracks, but at a short track, it tends to you know, be harder to avoid. But um, anyway, we'll just kind of try to ride this out. We got 95 laps to go. But a, a good point is if you struggle, especially with braking, this is a good, good time to talk about brake bias. I prefer lower brake bias than most people on. I don't like to hit the brakes and have the car shoot right, especially if I have to stop on it. The idea behind the brake bias is it can do a couple of things, and some people use it for that, and there's nothing wrong with it. But, just like in your streetcar, setting the brake bias so you can use the brakes, would you have to, in a way that won't hurt you. My kind of generic brake bias at all the um, mile and a half higher tracks is 59%. And that works really well. I can stop on the brakes. I don't have to worry about shooting to the right or nothing. Oh, well, we're gonna pit. We got damage. Got three laps up, second place car. He'll gain a lap on me. He'll stay out, but it's okay. Look at this traffic jam. Yeah, we're good. So, you know, the idea is you get it to work for you. And like at this track, Martinsville, I'm running a 50%, 5-0 instead of a 59. Now, why is it less? So when I hit the brakes, it helps me turn. 
know, if I if I ran a, a higher brake bias, some people do. Um, traditionally, you probably would, um, but traditionally, you also wouldn't be hitting the brakes and turning at the same time. So that's a big no-no um, for handling in the past. But suspension and braking has gotten to the point where you don't have to really worry about that anymore. So you can brake and turn, but if you're braking and your car wants to push to the right because of the brake bias, and you're gonna have a harder time turning into the corner. Now, some people, you know, some people use that and they keep a higher brake bias because they have such a new setup that down the run, the car gets loose in. You know, like when you get off the gas and go to turn it, when it tires are worn, it, it wants to over-rotate in. So being on the brakes and having a uh, heavy front, like an 80% you know, towards the front brake bias can help with that. But, you know, a couple shock adjustments, one shock adjustment can help with that. It all depends on track and what you're doing. Um, this setup will get a little loose in, but with the force feedback, I will feel it in the steering wheel. So, not now, but later on, if it gets a little bit loose, it won't be lo loose in all the time. It's weird. It's like in certain situations when I'm around other cars, and I will, I will feel the... the I don't know, I'll feel it in the steering wheel. It, it gives you some kind of feedback, and of course feedback, and I'll turn it to the right a little bit. Um, usually when I'm on the brakes, like now, you can see me turn it to the right, and then I'll turn it back to the left. I won't turn it a lot to the right, I mean like an inch or two past. Straight. Just to offset that a little bit. But I accept that. To not slow the setup down, you know, in certain situations at the end of the run. It's weird, it's only certain situations. It's not a universal, it's a universal thing I'd be more concerned about. The more I'm trying to get this thing to handle and be fast all the way through the run, um, right now, it slows down, as far as I can tell, I only had that one really long run, 85 laps so far, is it tends to slow down to about 19.5 when you have a clear track. But I have, I have been able to hit 19.4s at times. It's just, you can't get clear enough track with all these guys on it to do, you know, do it lap after lap. So did I just get lucky and then, you know, The 65 thing, I was free for like three, four laps, and I was in 19.3s consistently, you know, all those laps. And once I got free, the area I was free, around and lose time. And you lose so much time at a track like this. The other thing is, um, for tracks like this and road courses, flat tracks, and road, put your brakes moving all the way up. It also help you on the all the tracks entering pit road. Put your brakes moving all the way up. Um, the brake technology is such, and has been for like 20 years, that you get great brakes in these cars. Yeah, they might not they might not slow you down as much as a sports car or an F1 car. An F1 car, you could go from like 200 miles an hour to zero in like 10 feet or something ridiculous. Because they're so light and the brakes are almost the size of the wheels, and they're huge, and they have, you know, eight piston calipers or whatever they're up to for now. Well, NASCAR has that, you know, available technology, I think they use six piston calipers like for your street car, typically one or two pistons, you know, two pistons in the front, one piston in the rear, that's what an economy car is, not that unusual. And the less pistons mean the more pressure you have to run through those one or two points. And it tends to, you know, lock them up because you can't get the pressure, when you get the pressure high enough, like when you stand on a brakes or something, 
it it kind of clamps the calipers unevenly. With more pistons, you can put more pressure, and it's you know it's more overall pressure, but it's also more even across the caliper. So there's a less chance to lock up. Um, yeah, you can never have enough brakes. And I also have, I run a Logitech G923 um, pedals. Um, and it has some kind of, I don't know what the hell the Logitech name for it is, or it has some sort of braking software that makes it more like uh, real life. All, all I know is when I go down into a turn and I hit the brakes with this pedal set, it's like, wow, it's like night and day, especially with the brakes moving on. Um, also, I, I don't know, I drive a certain way. I, in real life, I, I don't think I've, I've ever gotten wheel hop on a rear wheel drive manual transmission more than once or twice in my life. And I'm nothing I drove on a regular basis. So, um, yeah. I know other people experience that in this game, especially on some of the road courses. Um, stomping on the brakes and stuff. I never had that problem. Um, you can drive in a different way and never have that problem too, which is probably more what I'm, what I'm doing. But if you have a better um, brake plan, you know, kind of thing, the brake brake bias, it be a good, you know, set of pedals. Um, it can make a difference. Sometimes it can make a huge difference. I tell you what, it's maybe faster as a road course. I still struggle against the controller guys. The uh, games have that bias uh, for controllers. Um, from what I understand, it's a better tire wear. So they can, you can run a looser setup, longer kind of thing. And a looser setup at a lot of tracks is faster. Um, but they have other issues, you know, they don't have a clutch, um, which, you know, most, most people don't use it right. I know one guy who uses it real good. I can use it like that. Uh, for, well, gas saving. Oh, that was... Wow, that was weird. I got hooked. But you saw, I almost stopped on a dime there. Instead of hitting the wall, so... Unfortunate, but not gonna hurt us, though. Really. Oh, and I had it. We had a couple of cautions in the middle to late parts of the first few stages, and uh, I know on the first one we had another caution about 17 laps to go. Went green with 17 laps, and I stayed out. Um. I wanted, to see, I wanted to see, and I actually spun the tires on the restart. <laughs> I've done that only a handful of times. Uh, I'm like that they, I like that they put that in there, but it happened so infrequently. It's like I, yeah, I was not prepared for it, but I'm, you know, I'm always on the ball when it comes to stuff like that. But it did get me sideways. See, the track feels faster now. A little less grippy, too, but also faster. So, um, yeah, get your brakes right. Um, I highly recommend the G923 pedals. There's you know, a little confusion. You know, everybody knows the G27, the original pedal set and steering wheel. And the technology is, they're all compatible. You know, like I have, um, I had, uh, 
G27 pedals on my G923 wheel. Uh, I also had it on my G29 wheel. And then uh, my pedal set went, so I finally pulled out the 923 last year and I was like, oh, I should have done this when I first got it. But I was like, there was nothing wrong with the old pedals, so I didn't change them out. And, you know, you got to take them off. I have it on a, a sim racing setup. Patch of seat and whatnot. So I didn't want to, you know, undo all that and the wires and everything, so... I just put the new wheel on which is the easiest thing to do. I and I have my original G27 chipper that I got in 2014, so that makes it eight years old. That still works fine. The only thing that bums me out is the little, um, the uh, gear indicator on the top of the shifter. Yeah, that, that gave us the ghost. And I haven't glued it back on yet. I have it over on, to the right over here, actually. Sometimes I let it drift wide but I'll hit people. Because this brake pedal requires a lot of pressure. And uh, in fact, when I had it hooked up to the, the Formula One game, Formula One 23, I think I had. Um, yeah, it was, it was prohibitive for me because I have issues with my feet. And like the hardest I hit it here is less than it, it feels like less than the softest I would hit it in F1. F1 is very physical in, in that way. Um, with all the uh, the assists and everything, the power and the electronics, and all they pack into those cars, which is truly amazing. I am a fan of F1, um, mainly as a, as a spectator and not a participant. Um, cause, I mean, they do stuff every turn. They make adjustments in the in car adjustments to maximize the car for every turn on the track. And you get to a, a track of 20 turns, man, you, you, you're tapping more than you're driving. That's not, you know, that's not driving to me. That's one of the reasons why I like NASCAR. If you ever watch um, the old uh, 80s races at the old Riverside track, yeah. That was fun. That's what I like. Fun. Oops. Hit, it, hit it totally wrong. But I did tighten it up and I didn't think about that. For the longer run, and now we've had two pit stops, so... I'm going to loosen it back up. But anyway, let's see what it does. We will have about... Five laps on this. See, it's still one percent loose, which is totally cool. Totally cool. And running 1970 in traffic is also very fast. This Heat Four is more like 194 is stupid fast because you're about two tenths a lot faster than the fastest AI. And uh, that's good. I mean, I know that 1907, 1907 was in the race here. And that was probably on fresh tires for a very short period of time. Um, 457 down. But yeah, when you have these really long, 
you know, I, I know not many people, you know, run the full races, but, I mean, I haven't run full races since 1989. I prefer it, because I'd love to have been a stock car driver. Fortunately, I grew up in the north. No race track. Well, actually, I grew up when all the racetracks were closing as I got interested. Yeah, all of them turned into strip malls and shopping malls. All gone in like a, you know, almost a hundred mile radius around me. And uh, the few that stayed were, were dirt tracks. Two or three asphalt tracks are in them. Unknown to me, very small, uh, third mile. Um, two thirds, I think they're both of them, uh, that I found in my 20s. But when I was younger, I had no idea. And, and my parents were so far removed from racing. It was like, you know, penguins would be from, you know, going on vacation in Hawaii. So, it, it, I did manage to get on the track. I did manage to get lucky. But it, it was a very short period. It was one really good session. Uh, I did manage to meet some guy who was a road cross champion. Uh, sports car. When he was an instructor at Bob Bonder at school that used to do our what we called ride and drives. Um, Helped me tremendously. But most of what I what I learned was basically talking to drivers, watching, you know, um, and listening to the drivers when they comment on stuff. I mean, you know, the cliche days of thunder, ah, I watched it on ESPN, the coverage was excellent. The coverage was excellent. I can't I, it's hard to describe, but they have they have those old races on NASCAR.com in the archive section, and you watch, you know, they didn't do it every week, but, but they did it when they went to different tracks, like Martinsville, they were very intense, Darlington, they were very intense, and they explain, you know, all the different things, the problem areas and the setup, um, what to look for, you know, and your favorite driver, you know, if he's having, you know, right front tire problems and he's struggling with, with tight. That's probably why, you know, he's fast in the beginning of a run and he slows down later. All kinds of interesting stuff and, and just their insight was invaluable. Ned Jarrett, Lenny Parsons. Just accepting um, Today, you know, he, I, I think they were drivers and they were talking purely from the driver point of view which I love. Now, I, I love the new, you know, the new guys, the new drivers and stuff, and they do explain, but I think, personally, I think they were told to, like, turn the tech, techno babble down and just be more spectator-like and not so much behind the, you know, the technicalities and stuff. Like, Steve Latart used to explain stuff, which was great. Iron Mac, awesome. You know, I would pick up so much. And then you go and you get a sim. I still think of these as sims. This is the best goddamn sim I ever had compared to what I started on. And you just go out there and, you know, you apply it. And some things are very realistic and some things are not. But for the most part, it's more realistic than not realistic. Yeah. But if you're on a controller and you just, you know, kind of like, you know, in the God view or whatever, and yeah, you're not going to get the full experience, and no force feedback. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to get like 10% of what, like say, I'm, I'm experiencing here. I'm sweating from this here. It's also hot here, but you know, I get a good workout at a track like Martinsville or Bristol. Eight laps to go, 47 laps of gas, 98, 87 on the tires. Wow, I'm a little, got a little loose. Maybe that's what I, what I was feeling. I didn't change the setup.
should have no problem. At least. If you notice with the brakes, I mean, just like if I was driving on the street, you know, I I can drive fast enough that I can't stop in time, but I'm not running full out. I mean, I got a two lap lead. I'm talking to you guys and just kind of half casual on it. That's like 35 laps now. If I didn't make all those adjustments to tighten up, I'd probably be too tight, too loose right now. There's a 19 grip. So, you know, make a note, day race in Martinsville, third, late third day, he's gonna feel looser. Gonna drive looser. Those are the things you can only learn by running. I snapped the wheel and because it's loose, it, it, the car snapped back at me. So it didn't like it. And that'll happen. It's like if you overcorrect off the turn, you know, you know, instead of going left into the left side wall, you end up snapping right into the right side wall or on top of traffic. It's important to Right rear really is slipping, so that's why I hit the wall there. I want to see if it would break or not. When they slow down a lot, you know, the slower you go to a point, the more the steering wheel has an effect. Same thing with the faster you go, the more the steering wheel has an effect. So it changes the way the car handles. And at a track like Martinsville, it's the slowest track as far as speed to the turns. Um, when you have a fast setup like this, you have to slow down so much. It really make you look like an idiot, but understanding what's going on is important. So you can account for it.
pedaling is. Oops. Um, through um, pedaling is getting on and off the gas. It's only 3%, but the damage I got, some of the damage I got must be 80, because I got worse if uh, I got the side damage. Last lap. It's over. Okay, want to slide up, and then you correct, and it wants to spin out. Oh, we made it. Five hundred laps. Oh, I'm not a lot of pain. <laughs> but we did it. These long replays are... Yeah. I don't, I don't know what it's doing. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's the first stage. One of those cautions. Maybe a second stage. I got minor damage all around the car from uh, issues like that little checkup that you saw. There's nothing you can do about it with the AI to run really slow. Hold the brake. <laughs> and that was it. Well, that's pretty long, but 
Yeah, hold the brake when you spin. Or when you hit the wall. But still, let's see what we got on the uh, in the bank. Grandfather clock, nineteen two one eight. Not bad. Still looking for those consistent eighteen nines. I only did not lead five laps. That's a, that's wild. Okay. Yeah, so that was fun. Um, wasn't really ready to do that. I'm getting two nights bad sleep. But um, I just, you know, got to do it. Got to get through it. So I, I, on this game, I really enjoy the... Uh, really? Okay. I really enjoy the, um, the bigger tracks. Danny has to say. Hey there, we're amigos, so I feel like I can be honest with you. The driving that last race was horrible. I can't believe you <laughs> ran into me. Wait, are you kicking me out of the fantasy football league? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I hit the wrong button there. But... Oh, Xfinity. Okay. Do a prep race so we got some money. We got 2.3 mil. Not now. Um, so hopefully I will not erase this and upload it, and uh, I will see you at well, Texas Xfinity next time. So see you at Texas in the the new Xfinity car. Will I get the engine? Will I get you know what what upgrades? I'll post that video if I don't mess it up in a little while here. Thank you for watching. Take care.